Hello, team, and welcome to episode 23, Understanding Adjective Endings. Today is our first round of the Gringo Olympics, dun, 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 and we will also be seeing how we can expand our vocabulary, because if you learn word for pen, you learn one word. But if you learn a suffix, a word ending, you learn 100 words. And it's very useful to continue your, Ingr your English growth, specifically for vocabulary purposes. So team, welcome, and let's get to it. Uh, this, this was me at the, the, the Rio Half Marathon 21, maybe 42 next year, but it was awesome. And you are all invited to participate next year. We will be back. Um, first of all, you are going to be competing in the Olympics, you need to decide on a team name. And just like in school, when you get a point for signing your name, this is worth your first point. And our first topic of discussion is the importance of team names. Imagine your favorite soccer team, your favorite sports team. What if they change their names to the, to the, to the chickens, to the, to the cows? Would you like it? Why not? Why? Well, I guess why, but most people said no, so I'm going to go with why not. And what is it about these names that make us, you know, identify with them? So that is our first point of discussion. Part two, adjective suffixes. So first of all, remember an adjective, we use it to describe, usually a noun, but it can describe another adjective. But for, these pur for this purpose, an adjective describes a thing. And we're going to start with the four big ones. Number one, why? If you know anybody with a strong Brazilian accent in English, sometimes it sounds like they are adding why after most words. I have a doggy, and it's just because of the way Portuguese sounds. But what they're actually doing is they're turning a word into an adjective. So the same way that you can have a cloud, the thing up in the sky, you can describe the day as cloudy. The beach has a lot of sand. The beach is sandy. My office is a mess. This is true. It is messy. I need to you know, fix it up. Number two, ish. And why am I doing this? Because when you hear the word, the suffix ish, I want you to imagine this. Yeah, kind of, so-so, more or less. And we use it to kind of reduce an adjective. So we have green. Perfect. And then we have green-ish. Man, maybe it's kind of green, kind of brown. It's green-ish. You know, is it, well, you go to restaurants or you, you order something. You, you, you order something online. Say, oh, you know, I heard it's small. It's small-ish. It could be bigger, but it's not that small. So we use this ish to say kind of. Childish. You know, it's a little bit infantile. Reminds me of a child. A little childish. So we use this ish both formally. There are real words that end with this, like childish, but we can also use this informally as a method of reducing an adjective. So it's very normal. We have TV series, you know, the, the blackish, grownish, and they'd be very normal for us to use this in at least American culture. I don't know how it is in England, but I think it's normal there. Next up, we're going to see these two as a team, ED and ING. If you learn one of these, you're learning at least three, usually four, sometimes more words. So, uh, you know, I'm bored. Are you bored? The class is boring, hopefully not mine. But when we have these adjectives with ED, tired, bored, amazed, annoyed, it is the person or thing being affected. So I am bored. Why? Because the class is boring. I am tired. Why? Because the day was tiring. I am amazed. Why? Because the movie was amazing. So we have ED, the one affected, and we have the ING, the cause. Um, the movie was boring. It was amazing. The person is charming. And so we have one side, the one, the cause. We have the other side, the one affected. And we also have a verb form. That's why we have these ED, INGs, which are usually associated with, with verbs. So we have to bore, to amaze, to charm. And we usually have the noun form too, which is the idea of that thing. Tiredness, boredom, amazement. So we have 
guaranteed three, usually four, sometimes more. Uh, words where you can learn by learning one. If you understand these suffixes, all of a sudden you've learned a, a, a group of words. Um, I included some, some uh, adjectives with the letter G. My students will understand why from the Green Olympics. But I also included this link with a couple more suffixes. I'm going to go through them. Let's see. No, but here we go. So we have able, able. So when you are able to do something, you can do something. So read, you know, with a book, readable, um, something you can read. Is this water drinkable? Can I drink it? So we can add able uh, behind a verb. Um, is it always a verb? Well, behind a, a, behind a, a, behind a verb to say that you can do that thing. Um, I'm thinking of knowledgeable. Knowledgeable, you are able to give me knowledge about something, I guess. But we add able to say you can do something. We have al, which is when we want an adjective form of an idea. So we have a nation, but you might also have a national team. Uh, you have crime, and you can have a, a criminal lawyer. Uh, you have, let me see, you have a season. But you can also have a, a seasonal a seasonal barbecue sauce like they do at Trader Joe's. Full. Imagine this with one more L. Full, you know, has a lot of something. And somebody has a lot of joy. Um, they are very happy. You know, they are joyful. If something is very important to you, maybe this, this, this pen is very meaningful. Actually, it is. Lise gave me this pen. So it, it is full of meaning. We have yeah. Uh, with this, I would like you to, to, if you are unsure of a nationality, you should bet on specifically A-N. The I is common, but for example, we have American, Mexican, so it does not need the I. But most nationalities, Brazilian, Peruvian, Chilean, uh, we have the exceptions, uh, Japanese, Swedish, but in general, most nationalities. We have IV, which we include after a verb to say something that does that thing. Something that attracts is attractive. Something that has a good effect is effective. Um, something that imagines is imaginative. So we have these if when we want an adjective form of a verb. Less, it's like the opposite of full. So uh, with less, it's when you, you don't have something. You know, homeless, very unfortunate. I'm from New York. There are a lot of homeless people, people without homes. Uh, you know, on a, in a better version, you know, if you go to, you go to, to, is it Olive Garden? Yes, Olive Garden, where they have the, the endless breadsticks. They do not end. Um, if, if they end, I think their meal is free. So they are endless, without end. Same way that I could say that something is meaningful, it could be meaningless, no meaning. We have like, which is the only one of these suffixes that carries a hyphen. So to say that it resembles that thing. So. Um, you know, he's acting very childlike. He's acting like a child. Maybe the person got all dressed up for, for a meeting. You know, you're dressed very business-like. Hopefully, the person does not look mouse-like. And last up, O-U-S. I think these are just the, the adjectives that come from French. Maybe it's ou, délicieux. But no, in English, we say delicious, famous, dangerous. We have a lot of these O-U-S adjectives, some very nice ones. You know, um, gorgeous, glorious, generous, but um, I, I think they just come from French. There's no, no real secret about it. Uh, so those are our suffixes. I don't recommend you try to memorize all of this, but if you have a printer, print it out. And it's something when you're, you know, watching a, a TV series, like the, the Leonardo DiCaprio meme, the, ooh, there it is. And then you will remember this class and that's when you will really, you know, fix this in your memory. Continuing on. So our talking point this week is our competition. I think most people have at least a little bit of that competitive spirit. Some people have a lot of that competitive spirit. So that's your talking point. Grab a study buddy. Talk a little bit about competition. Um, competition at work. Is it good? Is it bad? What are the pros and cons of competition? Nothing on this planet is just good. There's always the trade-off. Um, some stories from when you competed. It can be from a, a sport, it can be just at work, it can be a, an activity. 
Um, we're always competing for, for something. Uh, the difference is between having a goal and competing, something that I talked about with my students, very interesting. And how to make competition healthy, always important. So these are some things that you can discuss. And our game this week, where we will be challenging your, 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 your abilities to perform under pressure is the five second rule. And no, I am not talking about when food uh, hits the ground, which I actually learned was a three second rule. But um, the way this game works, there's a video here um, for you to see them playing it on the Ellen DeGeneres show, is you will receive a category and you have five seconds to give three answers. And the reason we played these type of games is there's no real problem if you lose or if you make a mistake. In real life, it's sometimes it's hard to try something new out in, a, in your job, in a relationship. It's, there can be problems. But with games, you feel the pressure. Uh, I hate when I see the timer. Five, four, three. But there's no consequence. If you lose, you just start again. And that feeling is excellent for our growth, for our confidence. So it's a quick game you can play in five seconds that I think has, uh, it pays dividends. It's, a, it's an excellent way to, to practice English quickly. You can do it in the car, just really need a friend. You can even do it by yourself, but it's better with somebody else. And last up, a bonus grammar point, connotation versus denotation. Uh, I, I, I had to refresh my memory about this. That was very cool, where the denotation is the literal, while the connotation is the feelings involved. So, for example, a rose is a red, sometimes another color, flower. It has some forms. Um, it has, it's, it's delicate, I guess. But the, the connotation would be about love and passion. Uh, so that would be the difference. So I thought it was pretty cool. And we have some, some exercises here. Um, I actually need to include this link, but good that I saw it. I will include it in the official PDF uh, where you can practice this as well. Team. Like always, my pleasure. Thank you, and I hope to see you in class for round two of the Gringo Olympics. See you there.